Davidson is in the home whites, Radford in the road reds, as we are just about ready to go on this Saturday from Davidson. And away we go for this non-conference battle between the Wildcats and the Highlanders. Davidson starts with possession. Here's Unjun Lee, the conference's leading scorer, more than 18 points per game. He's got the ball right now. Brykovic inside scores. The senior from Austria, great slip to the 10. And what they were able to do there, Davidson got Junkum away from the rim, and that created a big mismatch for Brykovic on the interior. That's an easy finish for him. McNeil slips and travels. And, Matt, this was something we, we talked about at the, the top. Radford turns the ball over nearly 17 times per game, and that just can't happen early and, and not a good way to set the tone. Yeah, the Highlanders, if they're to win this ball game today, must control the tempo. They're a team that wants to play in the high 50s, low 60s. Davidson, a team much more comfortable playing in the mid to high 70. Offensive foul goes against Sam Meninga, who shakes his head. He's had a rough go at it recently, scored in double figures four of his first five games, but he's been in some foul trouble since. Radford ball. Highlanders out of the Big South Conference. Projected fourth in the North Division. First time the Big South has split into divisions. Here's Xavier Lipscomb. Now Rashun Williams, our player spotlight at the top. Seven on the shot clock. Great defense from Mike Jones. Anjun Lee is fouled by Lewis Jockham, what would you like to see early on from Davidson? They've won six in a row. We talked about the three-point shooting. What do you want to see from Davidson to know they're engaged early? Well, I think more than anything, you want to get Sam Menango going. You talked about the bumps in the road for him since the early going. And I, I think a big part of it is he's the fifth guy, if you will, in this starting lineup. It's not a question of talent. It's a question of where he fits in a rotation where so many guys have a ton of talent and demand a lot of shots. Here's Foster Lawyer coming off that career high. 35 points last time out against Northeastern. Gobbles that one up off the deck. Lawyer, good ball fake. And knocks down his first three. Foster Lawyer used that pump fake quite a bit against Northeastern. In fact, Matt, that's one thing Bob McKillop said post-game. The pump fakes from Foster Lawyer were lethal in that win. Yeah, coming back down the court, though, Foster Lawyer was grimacing and kind of shaking out his left wrist. Certainly is not shooting hand, but something to keep an eye on after that first make. An early substitution for the Highlanders. Five on the shot clock as Kyrie Walker's into the game. Side pocket three, no dice from Brian Hart, the graduate student, but an offensive rebound. And the three-pointer falls for the second attempt. Brian Hart, just 36% from three, able to knock that one down. But he's a volume shooter. Mike Jones buries a corner three, and he's got a chance for a four-point play. Was his foot on the line? I think the... Official along the near sideline pointed to a two. I didn't have a great angle on it, but I think it was a two. Nonetheless, a chance to earn one more here at the line for Mike Jones. Mike Jones from Minnesota cashes in. Well, on the stats, it was listed as a three. So give him the four-point play. And Davidson leads 9-3 to three in the early going. The A-10 against the Big South. Rashun Williams. That deadens off the iron, and Unjun Lee accelerates into the front court. Too many steps. Foster Lawyer travels. Some early subs for Bob McKillop, Grant Huffman, and Desmond Watson check in. We had a chance to catch up with assistant coach associate head coach Matt McKillop in his 14th season before this game and Matt he told us that the bench players in particular Huffman and Watson add a different element to the table when they come into the game it's not like they're subbing 
uh, to be the same type of productivity. Well, and I think in today's game in particular, Bochi Yidam is going to be a great matchup against Williams, an athletic forward who can go out and contest shots really good on the defensive end. Yeah, Bochi Yidam, the other player to check in along with Huffman and Desmond Watson. Here's Huffman with the ball. A terrific defender, according to Matt McKillop. Anjun Lee splashes home a three, and Davidson's out to a 12-3 charge against Radford. A remodeled Radford team, as we alluded to earlier. Darius Nichols in his first season as the head coach, just 35 years old, the fifth youngest head coach in Division I. And it's going to take some time, but it is exciting because he returns home to where he played high school, Radford High. Hunjun Lee off the mark. The rebound down to Kyrie Walker, Richard Sr. from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. But Davidson's getting what they want. They've made their first three. That was their first miss from long range, but they're getting the looks they want going inside out early. Yeah, Davidson made their first four shots from the floor. Shot clock at 10. Good ball movement in the corner. Williams to Brian Hart. And that one swirls out for Hart, who's one of three from beyond the arc. Yeah, I mentioned a moment ago, he's the volume shooter. Coming into play today, 41 of his 57 attempts coming from outside the arc. So even though he's a touch below 40%, certainly a guy who's a likely three-point shot taker. Yeah, six of 13 for Hart in his last three games. As that one bounces a couple times and goes down for Luka Brykovich. Timeout taken by Radford and Darius Nichols. Seasons with him at Louisiana Tech prior to that. Certainly a guy who's an up-and-comer in his own right on the bench for Florida. And his older brother Shane is on staff. I asked him, what's the best piece of advice your older brother's given you in your life? And Darius said, I, I wouldn't say advice. He said he basically showed me how to work without telling me. So that means 6 a.m., basketball drills and whatnot were taking place and and Darius would just follow in Shane's footsteps in the morning wouldn't ask any questions shot clock at six here's R.T. Stapleton floater in the lane and that's pure for the junior from Chicago who had six starts on the season coming off the bench today yeah a little bit surprised that he didn't earn the nod but a really athletic guard who's a guy who's going to drive down, he'll get to the bucket. The only concern for him, much like the team, turnovers. Desmond Watson off the mark and a rebound for Drayvon Mangum, a redshirt junior from Roxborough, North Carolina, who just checked in as well for Darius Nichols' team. Well, Mangum started his career with the Charlotte 49ers, so he's faced Davidson before, went against the Wildcats back in 2018. Mangum in that ball game against Davidson was able to put up nine points and three rebounds. Here's Hunjun Lee, tough shot, no problem. Right over top of Keyshawn Porter, who just entered the game as well, a six foot four sophomore. Well, I think when Lee left the floor, he was going up trying to get contact and earn a foul call. And he was looking for that call, made the shot, but I think he was more intent on trying to get the whistle than making the basket. But when you're as good of a shooter as Hung Jun Lee, well, no problem on the jumper. He is he is something else. One of the best players in the A-10, one of the best players in the country. He's on the Julius Irving list, uh, watch list, I should say, which recognizes the top small forwards in Division One and a junior from South Korea who continues to grow his game and Matt McKillop told you pregame about his rebounding ability. It's it's up there. He's averaging seven a game, but they don't really talk about that. It just happens naturally, it seems, he gets rebounds. Yeah, he said just really good instincts, able to identify when that shot goes up, whether his guy is crashing or not, and make most of it. Getting an offensive rebound is there's an over-the-back call on the, now uh, on Luka Brankovic rebounding. But I, I think it's really interesting for a guy in Lee who is – Brought in as a shooter and has rounded out his game offensively in a lot of different ways. And while he certainly has the height, you don't look at him and go, oh, he's your leading rebounder. But he is. And McKillop, to your point, Sam, said historically, Davidson guards tend to rebound really well. A Davidson team that has looked very good so far this season. 7-2. and two. They've won six in a row. Their longest win streak 
since the 2014-2015 campaign, and Radford getting sloppy with the ball. Backcourt violation as Porter couldn't save it, and Davidson takes over possession as David Christensen, the junior from Denmark, enters the game for Nelson Bochi Yidem. We'll talk about this throughout the course of the game, but the A-10 is absolutely loaded. It's, it's a wide open slate and, and too early to call for sure when you look up and down the league. But Davidson sitting at seven and two. Off to a good start. Here's Mike Jones. Now Christensen getting some early PT today. Meninga attacks baseline. A little too strong. Radford the other way. Rashin Williams attacks and throws it down with one hand. Goodness. The biggest highlight yet for Radford. Well, you certainly see the athleticism there from Williams. 6'7", 220. Boy, does he have some leaping ability and hang time. A junior from Arlington, Georgia, transferred over from South Florida where he played three years for the Bulls. Actually was recruited out of high school by Darius Nichols, Radford's head coach, when he was an assistant at Florida. So he had his eyes on Rashun Williams, now in his first year at Radford, and he answers for a second straight possession with a three. Williams now with five. 18 to 10. Radford with a couple of buckets to try and climb back into this as Mike Jones responds from the top. The redshirt junior is shooting 42% from three. Quite the upgrade from a season ago. He was averaging in single digits last season. Now he's averaging 11.4 points per game. And certainly part of it is the role and the playing time, but you just see the confidence blossoming for uh, for Mike Jones to be able to step into shots and get the playing time to not feel like he's got to make the most of five or ten minutes in a game. Like he's relied upon it, and exactly. he's able to find the rhythm and find the groove offensively. That's a good point. He, Mike Jones knows that he's going to get more playing time now that he's a starter as opposed to coming off the bench. And there he is. The garbage man inside, Mike Jones with nine points. Well, credit Jones' hustle, but that is a, a poor rebound for Radford to give up. I mean, he caught that hip high at the free throw line. They had four guys standing around. No one really truly boxed out. Jones on the perimeter. Mangum buries a three. Devon Mangum shooting 37% from three this season. And he fits their mold, right? A, a, forward by position but a guy comfortable playing on the perimeter foster lawyer tough bucket inside every time radford gets something on their side of the floor they can't get a stop defensively and they've struggled uh, to to really guard this season and what have we seen the last three possessions a three ball by mike jones an offensive rebound by mike jones and assist by mike jones he impacts them in so many different ways yeah what a start for mike jones nine points He's perfect from the floor. He's cashed in on a four-point play. Here's Foster Lawyer weaving through traffic. Inside, 10 minutes to play in the first half. Jones, his first miss from the floor. Lipscomb the rebound for Radford. Rashin Williams rises. Now one of three from downtown two of six from the floor and davidson will slow it down coming off that 79 69 win over northeastern on the road had five days off of an actual game that is as foster lawyer you, you just can't leave him that open he's 56 percent from three matt which is second in the country according to the NCAA official stats page, that is ridiculous, and he's going to make that every time. Well, it's just so difficult to defend this team, and, and Lawyer is going to get the credit in the box score, but it was all the off-ball movement. Here's another steal, and Davidson comes away with it. There's all this cutting action to the basket, and that's what frees up Lawyer because the defense has to sag back. They have to cut off those passing lanes, and, and as a result, Lawyer left alone for that three-pointer. Yeah, Bob McKillop said post-game after the win against Northeastern that Foster Lawyer 
was just a guy that brought the ball up the floor off the bench at Michigan State. Now he is a scorer. He is a scorer and pass uh, type of point guard. With five on the shot clock, Lipscomb misses the three, and Radford now three of nine from distance in this first half. And we see both the starting point guard and backup for Davidson out there on the floor, Huffman and Lawyer, along with David Christensen, Sam Meninga, and Mike Jones, 10 on the shot clock. And a foul on Xavier Lipskin will take us to immediate timeout. 33 as the head coach at Davidson. And time and time again, he's continued to win. He's the fourth longest active head coach uh, to be with the same school. It's just been great to see what he's done over the years. And this season, he's got a team that has a chance to compete for an eighth championship. Well, I think this team is a testament to his coaching abilities. There are not many coaches that lose a guy like Kellen Grady. And teams come back the next year and win seven of their first nine and six in a row. It, it's a plug-and-play system, but there are not many coaches that can overcome the talent loss in Kellen Grady and find guys who were role players a year ago that slot in so well in the starting rotation. Yeah, no question. And one of those guys, Foster Lawyer, who we've highlighted, five to shoot for Radford. All discombobulated on this possession as Stapleton misses the three and Shaquan Jules, who just entered the game, a 6'7 junior from Orlando, got the offensive rebound. And they're going to need contributions from Jules, and, and Jonkum's been on the bench for a majority of this opening half. They've got to get paint touches. Three balls are not going to beat this David team, and they're finally able to cash in down low. Yeah, that, that highlight right there from Shaquan Jules, he did that a few times when I was looking back at the... Radford game against Virginia Tech. Radford played Virginia Tech and Virginia earlier on in non-conference. Lost both of those games, but Jules was a bright spot a, a few times as Brykovic with some body control called for the offensive foul. Maybe extended that arm out a little bit, Matt. Uh, for Davidson back at Belk Arena with Matt Present, Sam Hyman with you on ESPN Plus this Saturday afternoon just north of Charlotte. It's been all Wildcats so far, shooting 58% from the floor. And this Radford team out of the Big South struggling. Well, Sam, you talked about the tempo of this game going into that last timeout. And Davidson picking up full court pressure right out of the timeout, trying to speed up the Highlanders a bit. This is a team that is in the lower third of NCAA hoops in terms of tempo. They don't have a ton of depth. If they're not able to get sped up, that really plays into Davidson's hand. And Radford, a team that has struggled to take care of the ball as well. They've already turned it over five times as Unjun Lee gets the backside rebound and tosses it ahead to Desmond Watson, a very talented freshman from Columbus, Ohio. And again, I think for Radford, the biggest thing that I point to here early is shot selection. 11 of their first 19 from three-point range. And you see what Lawyer's able to do that time along, too. It's just not a team you want to get in a shootout with. They have to establish something in, on the interior. This has been such a quick game. We've seen just one free throw taken from both squads. Here's Cameron McNeil, and the official was about to call an offensive foul. Yeah, it was like a, a play on in soccer. <laughs> he, he had the motion ready, and then we just kept rolling. And here's a takeaway. This is Kyrie Walker. Now Brian Hart unloads and sticks a three. That's his second of the game, and uh, somebody just got teed up. I just saw somebody get a technical foul. Bob McKillop is visibly frustrated. It may be back to when there was a no call. Well, yeah, it goes against Menenga. So what happened there, Sam, to go back to that last sequence, is you had what should have been a charge at one end, right. not called because the referee deemed in his mind that it would be a disservice to Davidson to make that call, that they had the advantage, so he held back. Then on the other end, Menenga goes into the defense. Guy falls down. There's no call on either way, block or charge, and it leads to a fast break bucket. And so I, I almost think 
that by not making that call on one end, the ref felt like he couldn't on the other. And so even though initially in his mind it was to help David because they had the advantage, it led to a transition bucket the other way for Radford. That is uh, a tough pill to swallow. Bob McKill continues to showcase the, the frustration and, and rightfully so as Radford a chance to get to within single digits. The Highlanders haven't led this entire game. Davidson has dominated, shooting 60% from the floor. And now there's there was a technical foul. And at first it looked like it was going to be Radford's ball. It's Davidson's ball. A little confusion there. Well, I think because the technical came when Davidson was in possession, it was after the made basket with Davidson bringing the ball up the floor. That Because of that, they don't get the possession. Radford, that is, after making those two technical free throws. All cleared up now. And Radford, great ball fake. Corner three, pure from Tarion Joseph, a sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the Davidson fans frustrated right now as Radford's on a 5 nothing run. It's within seven. Foster Lawyer unloads. And a rebound down to Brian Hartz of Radford. Now an 8 nothing run over the last 70 seconds for the Highlanders. That was a very significant sequence for Radford as Stapleton scurries down the lane and scores. It's a 10-0 run for Radford. Less than five to play in this first half. Well, this 1-2-2 pressure has been a part of it. Davidson certainly doesn't turn it over very much. They're able to break it from an X's and O's perspective, but it's got them a bit discombobulated in terms of rhythm and shot selection offensively. A charge on Radford instead kept the play alive and it has translated over to uh, the Highlanders on this 10-0 run that Coach McKillop was frustrated that the charge didn't get called, but we play on. Here's Mike Jones, slashes to the 10 and scores, and that will erase the drought of more than two minutes of no scoring from the Wildcats, much needed. Well, I don't know if anyone could catch this, but on that inbound play, the, the first option was Foster Lawyer coming around a couple of screens, and he was able to, to turn the corner so tightly. It looked like he was a hockey player on skates, just the way his body was angled around those screens. And you had the vision to, to recognize that. Kudos to you. That's what you call going in-depth prior to the inbound. As Shaquan Jewell sco scored on the other end, he's shown some... Post presence here as Ooh. Watson slips on the floor. Second time we've seen somebody slip on the floor today. Des Watson. Well, he's fortunate. His head went flying backwards, and that could have been a lot worse. Certainly they're going to mop up the perspiration, but, boy, for a split sack, and I had visions of his head flying back against the hardwood. Yeah, never want to see something like that transpire, and fortunately he's okay. As Davidson setting up in a... Full court press here against Radford outside of three minutes to play in the first half. The Highlanders on a 12-2 run over the last two minutes and 50 seconds. Radford's trying to snap a three-game losing streak and win their first game on the road this season. They're four and seven against a Davidson team that's won six in a row, seven and two overall. R.T. Stapleton. Seven shoot and another slip at the top of the key. A blocking foul. A charge to Kyrie Walker, a red shirt senior, with his first personal. That's the same place that I believe Cameron McNeil slipped. Yeah, that first to possession. Start the game. Of the game. Yeah, you remember that? Yep. But going back to the play design there, what they were trying to do is get Stapleton matched up against Jones. Originally, Davidson wanted to have Huffman guarding him. Huffman's a great defender. They're able to get that switch. And if they can go back to that, Stapleton is a really good downhill driver. Grant Huffman attacks and draws a foul. 
So Huffman, the backup point guard, will go to the free throw line where we haven't seen much action. And there's... Well, he's still down, grabbing that left ankle. Huffman is helped off the floor. An extremely talented backup point guard, Matt McKillop, associate head coach, told us that his defense is absolutely terrific. And he's 6'3", he's got good length, appears to be okay. A sophomore getting a round of applause from the Davidson faithful. These will be just the second and third free throws taken for Davidson in this first half. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if they sub him out after these free throws, but I think they'd rather have him take them than to have Radford choose a shooter. Well, Huffman, 62% on the season for the sophomore. Desmond Watson scurries to the scorer's table. And Huffman goes 0 for 2 and not able to sub out at the moment. 2.22 to play in the first. Radford's on a 12 to 2 run. And the Highlanders seeking their first road win of this season. Joseph connects on a 3 and the Highlanders are on a 15 to 2 run. It's just a two point game. Well, and Huffman clearly hobbled on the defensive end. They were able to get it to Joseph, his man defensively. Foster Lawyer responds with a three from the top. 13 points for Foster Lawyer, shooting 56% from three this season. Five point lead for the Wildcats. And Davidson's led by as many as 15 in this game. But it has gotten tight over the last five minutes. Here's Brian Hart. Now Shun Williams. Shot clock at six. R.T. Stapleton. That was a very dangerous pass. Some contact. Radford turns it over for the eighth time. Here comes Davidson. Here's Anjun Lee. Five points thus far. Huffman, wide open three. And a rebound for Tyrion Joseph. Blocking foul is called on the drive. It's against Foster Lawyer. He looked to be in position against R.T. Stapleton. Boy, the, the last six minutes, Matt, have favored Radford. They have closed the gap just to five with less than a minute to play. Well, Bob McKillop can't believe that last call, and I'm with him. It looked to me like that was right into the chest in legal guarding position. That said, Davidson, I thought, got away with a, a foul coming around. I thought it was Huffman trying to support the backside on the lob on the last sequence. May have gotten away with the foul there as well. Stapleton inbounds. Less than a minute to play in this first half. Radford trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Against the Wildcats who have won six in a row, their longest win streak since the 14-15 season when they made the NCAA tournament as a seven seed as that goes out of bounds. And it's the ninth Radford turnover. And I scored. All right, Mac, Mac Jones inbounds. And we have a foul as the inbounds was happening on Tarion Joseph. And a one and one is coming for Davidson. And a seventh team foul, so Foster Lawyer will head to the free throw line where he's 86% on the season. Davidson led 30 to 15 with 526 to play in the first half. As Lawyer hits the front end and fast forward to 43.9 seconds remaining in the first and it's just a six point game. Well certainly that technical foul three pointer sequence was big but at the same time I think the other things that have really worked for Radford the 1-2-2 pressure ha has disrupted Davidson's offensive sets 
and they've also been good shooting the three. Six of 14, that's about 13% better than their season average. Yeah, 33% from three coming in through the first 11 games for the Highlanders. R.T. Stapleton at a 13-second differential shot clock and game clock. Yeah, here, here, he nearly slipped as well there at the point. Stapleton drives, skips it to Rashin Williams. Great defensive sequence, a shot clock violation. And Radford saying that it hit the rim, I think. No, I think they were saying it was perhaps more than anything else that Jeffers does. All right, so 12.4 seconds remain in the first half. Seven point lead for Davidson. Here's Lawyer with 15 points to Mike Jones. Attacks, and it was pinned off the backboard. The bucket will count, goaltending is the call with seven seconds remaining. That was a rapid possession for Davidson and it worked out, Mike Jones with 13. Yeah, plenty of time still though left for Radford. Four seconds left. That three, no dice from Mangum and we've reached halftime. Well, the Radford Highlanders at one point went on a 12 to two run. All right, second half. Let's hit the go button as Radford starts with the ball. A young team, a, a brand new coaching staff, seven coaches on this roster. The average age is 30. As Shaquan Jules scores quickly for Radford, lead down to seven. Darius Nichols in his first year as the head coach at Radford, coming over from Florida. And it's been a work in progress, but the Highlanders are playing tough here against Davidson as Meninga is fouled and that's exactly what you want from Davidson you want touches in the paint and you want Menanga to really make Jules work on the defensive end because Jules has been big here today coming off the bench six points offensively and really the only paint presence we've seen to this point for Radford yeah it was Lewis Jockham who started this game the redshirt senior we haven't seen him at all since 19 minutes uh, left in the first half. Great body control by Unjun Lee. Just had five points in the first half to go along with five rebounds, two assists for the A-10's leading scorer. More than 18 points a game for Lee. 41-32 Davidson seeking its seventh straight win. Yeah, and certainly we don't have any additional information on Jonkum. He's sitting three seats from the end of the bench and after just playing the first two minutes of the ball game, you don't really get the sense that he's coming back in, but he doesn't appear to be injured either. Eight points for Shaquan Jules. Four already in this second half. And he appears to be the, the go-to guy in the paint the rest of the way, given the way he's played. Shot clock at 10. Here's Mike Jones inside to Sam Meninga. A native of New Zealand, four to shoot. Meninga, great spin, and no dice. But that's what Davidson wanted, and, and that's what I was talking about, being patient, being comfortable working there at the tail end of the shot clock. Meninga got a good look, just couldn't finish. Brian Hart out of bounds. Six of 17 for Radford from three. That's below 37%. But it's still better than their season average at 33. They've knocked down some big threes, including Tyrion Joseph's two triples in the first half off the bench. 41-34, Davidson on top. Great slip from Brykovic, and he flushes it down the drain. Brykovic, who just took three shots from the floor in the first half, big one. He really needed that. And now it's 43-34. Davidson on top of the Highlanders from the Big South Conference. Trying to snap a three-game losing streak. And they've used just about everybody on their roster as the Highlanders will send in Jockham, Lewis Jockham. It looks like they got Hung Jun Lee with, with a bump there defensively. But we haven't really talked a ton about what Radford does schematically. They really do a, a nice job of working the ball side to side. And oftentimes, once a point guard enters the ball into the low post as Jockham re-enters, 
Th that point guard is able to vacate towards the corner, and they do this replace action that really uh, spurs the offense side to side. Radford turns it over for the 11th time as Rashun Williams was trying to get it to Jockham. Here's Mike Jones, 13 points so far. Great skip in the corner, and Lawyer buries the three in front of the bench. Foster Lawyer with 18 points. Well, Ford made threes in this ball game on the heels of eight, his last time out against Northeastern. But what a gutsy pass by Mike Jones, not only to go over top of the defense, but also over top of the rim. That's not an easy pass to execute. Second assist for Mike Jones. And a memorable one as Brykovich secures his fourth rebound. Foster Lawyer unloads. Meninga secures the offensive rebound. Mike Jones, the native of Minnesota. Great patience. Can't finish. Here's Artis Stapleton the other way. A Division II Lewis University transfer. Coughs up the ball. 12 Radford turnovers. And they, they average 17, almost 17 turnovers a game. That is the thorn in this Highlanders squad side. Yeah, great defense from Brykovich there on the other end to reach in and get a hand in there. Active hands playing like a guard on the perimeter. Defensive fire. And it's Unjun Lee at the free throw line. A junior from South Korea who is having a marvelous start to the season. Has the attention of just about everybody in the country with what he has done. And uh, I want to bring this up. We talked about it during the William & Mary game, how Bob McKillop referred to Unjun Lee as the tertiary point guard, meaning the third in line. Brings the ball up the floor sometimes. He can do just about everything, Matt Present. Does it all. Yeah, and I think it's indicative of his rebounding his ball handling and the fact that he's able to move so well without the basketball and i think there's so many interchangeable parts on this davidson team certainly guys have different strengths and and weaknesses but they fit so well into this motion offense this cutting system and that's what allows each and every one of them to flourish foul off the ball as Huffman hits the deck hard, the officials will call an offensive foul on Lewis Jockham. Yeah, That's his third personal foul. So he has been a non-factor, the starting five man from Springfield, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. I'd have to see that again, Sam, but seeing it live, I, I think the severity of the collision impacted the call. I think it was a good screen, and Huffman just got blindsided and fell down because he was hit by a bigger body. There's Grant Huffman. Now Lee. Davidson looking for some bench production. They've got a couple of guys off the pine on the floor right now. Desmond Watson, Grant Huffman, and Nelson Bochayidam. But it's the starter. For the 10th time this season, Luka Brykovich, who scores, he's got eight points. Well, and just keep feeding him, right? I mean, he's able to catch that ball inside the charge circle, and that's such a luxury. It, Radford's going to have to start bringing a second defender, and that's going to open up three-point shooting. But it all starts with that deep catch. There's Mangum, who cashes in a three. That's the seventh Radford triple. Drayvon Mangum with his second of the game from beyond the arc. The lead is 13 for the Wildcats, looking for their seventh win in a row. And some jostling on the low block. Nelson Bochayidam and Drayvon Mangum tangled up a bit. I didn't see too much. The fouls on Mangum. That is his first. And Shaquan Jules takes a seat, and in comes Kyrie Walker, spelled C-H-Y-R-E-E. -E. Coming off the bench, redshirt 
senior who started his career at Delaware as Lee scoots to the basket and draws a foul. Foul goes against Kyrie Walker, so Lee back to the line where he'll have a, a couple of chances to add to his total right now, sitting at nine points for a guy that comes from a basketball family. Unjun Lee, his mother played on the South Korea Olympic team, actually, in 1984. Silver medal was awarded to that squad back in the mid-'80s, and his father, a longtime head coach in South Korea, so... And they have got one heck of a son who's got potential, Matt, I, I think beyond the, the college level. He's elite in multiple areas, and he's very humble, too. I think one of the things that I pulled from Media Day uh, a couple months ago is just the fact that he, he doesn't like to give himself the credit. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see what his future holds. Certainly has the, the skill level to play overseas, but... Back with Matt Present, Sam Hyman with you on ESPN Plus. The Wildcats shooting 58% from the floor. As we are back underway, this is Desmond Watson, the freshman from Columbus, Ohio. Looking for his first bucket of the game, as is Grant Huffman, who's got the ball right now. Quick entry pass, Luka Brykovic. Eight points. Making his 10th start of the season, and that was great work. Easy work for Brykovic. He's got 10. Yeah, again, able to take a peek around his shoulder, see that whatever help defense might be coming was going to come from the opposite block. The rest of his offensive teammates are able to clear out, and he's just too strong on that low block. Had a quiet game against Northeastern offensively, but did have three blocks and seven rebounds as Mangum... Navigates inside and scores. Drayvon Menger with eight points off the bench for Darius Nichols' team. Quickly the other Great way. Brykovic soaring high. 12 points for Luka Brykovic. And you alluded to the great pass there, Matt. Yeah, Bochy Edom able to come towards the center court circle to catch that ball and just turn and distribute with Brykovic cutting to the rim. 55-39 lead, largest advantage of the game for Davidson. It's 16 points. And Radford turns it over for the third, or pardon, the 15th time today. It's been a struggle for the Highlanders who currently sit four and seven on the season. Still without a road win. Davidson right now with the fewest losses among any team in the A-10. They're seven and two, now it's early and Davidson hasn't had uh, any games against power five opponents, if you will, but as Bob McKillop will say time and time again, they've had difficult teams on the schedule that a lot of people don't really know about as Sam Meninga rises high and rocks the rim. You know, New Mexico State is no joke. San Francisco is undefeated. And that's a tough West Coast trip. So the schedule is uh, one that you can't really gloss over, even though there aren't the Blue Bloods on the slate. And as Bochy Edom was, was open on the outlet pass there, the, the game against Loyola Chicago, Matt, is not going to happen because uh, Loyola Chicago had a COVID outbreak. Foster Lawyer... Now with 20 points, the Michigan State transfer. So it's going to be interesting next week. Where does Davidson go? Can they schedule somebody else? Because if they don't, then they won't have a game until December 30th against Duquesne to open up the A-10 slate. Well, and it's unfortunate because Loyola Chicago is such an established mid-major program. That was going to be a really yeah, we tough non-conference set. Right, it's one you circle on the calendar and... You know, Davidson would certainly like to replace it. They hope to have an answer on that front by the end of the day today. Uh, but Matt McKillop joked with us pregame. He said, I know every schedule in the nation. That's been his focus the last 24 hours, trying to fill that void come Wednesday. That, that's that's amazing. I'm sure he, I believe him. Uh, you have to believe him. He said it pretty confidently. He knows every schedule in the nation. That is, that's impressive. I think that's tougher than... Uh, running back the, the last 20 NCAA champions, right? Is that tougher? 
I don't know. <laughs> we'll Either way, it's a challenge, but I mean, it's it's a moving target. Foul at midcourt as Lawyer and Tyrion Joseph collide. Give me a guess. I'm going to go Kyle Korver. And you said you didn't wa watch much NBA. There you go. <laughs> Great work. Great work, Matt Present. Great work. But it's amazing how many fewer games it took Steph than Ray Allen or Reggie Miller. I mean, he's like 10 years younger than when those guys ended their career. Yeah, it's amazing. So it doesn't look like a flagrant was called on Lawyer. Instead, it's just his second personal. And David Christensen is called for the foul. It is, it is amazing. But and Ray he, Allen played 19 seasons in the NBA, and Steph is in year 13. Right, and he's transformed the way the game is played at that level. And to me, what stands out most about him is he just plays with so much joy. And, and it's always exciting to watch really talented players, regardless of the sport. But the really talented players that you can tell watching through the screen or having so much fun, it's that much better. And he is one of the very few that, that the joy just radiates through the screen. I, I felt that way about Zion Williamson watching him play in college a couple years ago. Just so much happiness playing the game. A lot of smiles all the time for Steph Curry as R.T. Stapleton is charged for a foul on the reach in on Foster Lawyer with 9.46 to play in this second half from Belk Arena in Davidson. Well, Bob McKillop did join the afternoon rush uh, on the radio earlier this week and uh, again used the word sensational to describe Steph Curry. Brought this team to the Elite Eight back in 2008. And the other thing I'd mention, and again, you, you gave the caveat, I'm not a huge NBA guy, but, <laughs> but Ray Allen and Reggie Miller we're not point guards. I mean, they were shooting specialists, right? Steph Curry's a excellent passer. He's a guy that can win off the dribble and get to the rim, and he's the best shooter in the world. It's, it is so fun to watch, and for him to do it at MSG, and for Bob McKillop to be able to go up there and make the quick trip had to be so sweet for the 33rd-year head coach at Davidson as Lawyer hits both free throws he's got 22 points and Foster Lawyer such a great addition to this team first year at Davidson transferred from Michigan State where he played 86 games but he only started eight games across three seasons and, and he's just sparkled immediately since putting on a Davidson uniform 61-42 lead. Stapleton wants that to count. And it looks like the officials saying that the foul was on the floor against Desmond Watson. Well, you have one team complaining that it wasn't an and one and another team complaining that it was a charge. <laughs> Tough to please. Here's Rashawn Williams. Tough pass inside. Plucked away by Lawyer, and he does commit the personal on the reach, and Foster Lawyer commits his third personal. As Grant Huffman will return. I did ask uh, Matt McKillop, associate head coach, a player comp for Foster Lawyer from, from former Davidson players. He said Brian Sullivan, who was about Foster's height, except Brian was more of a scorer. Foster can, can also dish the ball very effectively. He's got four assists today, so great to have a true point guard this season. Brykovich fouls Shaquan Jules underneath the 10. Great pass from Mangum to lead him to that spot back, got it in good position and earns free throws. Shaquan Jules, the junior from Orlando, Florida, coming in, leading the team in free throws made with 20. Well, we talked about the 
upcoming schedule, which is a little unknown right now for Davidson with the game against Loyola Chicago canceled due to the Ramblers' COVID outbreak, still trying to find out who they'll play, if they will play next week. Radford will not play Akron, actually, on Monday. That was on the schedule, but another COVID situation. So their next game wouldn't be until the 29th against UMBC unless, again, there are there, is, there would be a chance to fill in uh, during that stretch. Hopefully, both of these teams can find opponents to fill in. Well, and I said, there's still so much in flux. For example, and not that I think Davidson is going to match up with a West Coast opponent, but just to, to illustrate my point, UCLA is in a COVID pause. They were scheduled to play today against North Carolina. UCLA plays Cal Poly on Wednesday. So if they can't return to action, well, then Cal Poly doesn't have an opponent. Again, not that I think Davidson and Cal Poly are going to get together, but there's teams right now that have canceled a single game where it's certainly, yeah. you know, likely maybe or, or at least possible that multiple games get wiped off the schedule. Yeah, you never know. It's just an odd, odd time with... With COVID-19, as Huffman is trapped and he calls a timeout with 8.27 to play in the second half. This will stretch to Charleston. They bring in a new coach in Darius Nichols, but they have had a lot of success over the last three, four years. They finished in the top two in the Big South each of the last four seasons. And again, Big South Conference, one big league. So despite the tough non-conference schedule, the losing record, uh, zero road wins. You know, Darius Nichols can build this team within a season, and they could again compete for a championship in the Big South. It's just going to take time with, with a lot of new pieces. Yeah, I mean, just a few years ago, they knocked off LIU Brooklyn in a play-in game for the NCAA tournament, that 16 versus 16 for the right to play Villanova. Uh, they won the Big South regular season title in the 1920 season. Last year would have gone to the NIT had it been played. So, it, you know, it's certainly a program that has a history of winning. It's just about getting these pieces and a lot of transfers, a lot of newcomers to all get on the same page and be able to find that chemistry. Yeah, five newcomers, five transfers, excuse me, added to this roster. Rashawn Williams, Tarion Joseph, R.T. Stapleton, Cameron, Cameron McNeil, and Rashawn Black are the five transfers. And so it's going to take some time for Coach Nichols, but he is back home. And to to be in a place where you went, to, you grew up, you went to high school at Radford High, and there's a level of comfort, especially given the fact that it, it is his first Division One head coaching job. You'd like to think that the nerves are maybe lessened a bit because there's so many familiar faces around him. Well, right, and. The way he's assembled his assistant coaches, I, I think, is telling, right? You have his older, older brother. Well, that takes some pride, right, to say, I'm the younger <laughs> brother. I'm going to be the head man, but I want you by my side. But, you know, Shane Nichols coming from Murray State, coached the likes of John Morant yeah. there. Uh, Timothy Petey uh, from Missouri Western State, previously uh, in the region on Wes Miller's staff at UNC Greensboro. And James Herring, who was... Uh, the director of basketball operations at Dayton, familiar with this A-10 conference, familiar uh, with this regional landscape. And, and so I, I think that's telling of how he plans to build the program. He's got a, a four-guard lineup that is not just something that he told us is by default with the roster that he has. He, he likes having four guards out there the majority of the time. Here's Artis Stapleton, one of the guards... Division II Lewis transfer. That's just outside of Chicago. As Radford turns it over for the 18th time. That's the, that's the one area where if they are to compete for a Big South championship, great look inside as Lee scores off the dime from Grant Huffman. They can't turn the ball over this much. That's, that's going to be super key and, and something to watch in conference play. So... If my math's right, it's a 19-point deficit right now? Correct. 19 points off of turnovers for Davidson. 
That's it's exactly what we talked about. The, the the turnovers for for Radford have not only lost them the possession, but the points that Davidson is is putting in the bucket are are from those turnovers. And so again, you have to tip your cap to Radford. They they fought uh, late in the first half. Still 6:28 left in the game, but facing a, a much larger deficit. It was a 15-point lead with about six minutes to play in the first half, and Radford went on a 12-2 run and got to within five. But Davidson has dominated this second half as Jules hits the second free throw. And Lewis Jockham will check into the game a bit of a peculiar day for Lewis Jockham. He's got three fouls. He's only played three minutes, but when he picked up his first foul, that was all she wrote for his PT in the first half. Unjun Lee rises off the mark. One of four from three today for Lee. Lawyer, the triple try. Rashin Williams, the South Florida transfer in his first year at Radford with a rebound. Trayvon Mangum is bumped, no call. Jockham the offensive rebound. Stapleton, a foul warning has been issued on Trayvon Mangum. I'm not sure, maybe there was some dialogue that was said of some kind, but a verbal warning, or a foul warning, I should say, issued to Drayvon Mangum. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting call because usually a flop warning is assessed to a guy trying to take a charge, and that, that was not the case. It was called on the offensive player, and now a foul going against Brykovich, who got his elbow up into the jaw of Williams. Sam Meninger returns for Davidson. Yeah, that's four on Brykovich, and I think this right here, Sam, illuminates, I think the one concern I have for this Davidson team, and that's bench production. It's been minimal today, and you, as you go through Atlantic 10 play, there's going to be a game where a Brykovich or a Lee gets in foul trouble. You've got to have a sixth option. Nice floater from Brian Hart. He's in double figures with 10. Shaquan Jules leads Radford with 12 points off the bench for a Radford team that has played 13 guys today. And no Josiah Jeffers. He broke his nose against James Madison a couple of games ago. Five on the shot clock for the Wildcats. A good look there from Lawyer. Nice save from Rashun Williams. Radford marches the other way. Highlanders have yet to win on the road this season. Their last game was in the nation's capital. Lost to George Washington 67-58. A legal screen called on Rashun Williams. Davidson ball. I mentioned the, the A-10 is so deep. Six or seven teams almost you could point out and say they could win the league. When you look at Davidson, Rhode Island, St. Louis, Dayton, Richmond, VCU, even St. Bonaventure, they did suffer a, a brutal loss yesterday, 86-49 to Virginia Tech in the Basketball Hall of Fame shootout at Spectrum Center in Charlotte as Foster Lawyer pours in his eighth field goal, he's got 24 points to go along with four dimes. Big game tonight in the A-10, or for the A-10. St. Louis will play 13th ranked Auburn at 8 o'clock. That should be interesting. Well, Dayton's got the most noteworthy win, beating yes. Kansas earlier this year. and They certainly don't have the headliner OB top in like they had a couple of years ago.
3.49 to play in this second half. All Davidson. They've led by as many as 20 in this game as R.T. Stapleton travels. I will say, Matt, there, there have been some wet spots on the floor uh, a handful of times this afternoon. Not that that is the main reason why R.T. Stapleton slipped there, but we have seen the towels come out a few times. Yeah, don't really know what to make of it. Not something that... I don't want to speak for you, but that I recall seeing, you know, in terms of a pattern on this floor, it's yeah, not a not hockey on, arena. Yeah, not you know, on this floor. You don't really have a, a reason that you point to as an explanation. But certainly have noticed that tonight. Yeah, there was a, a, a player that I spoke to earlier this season, Aaron Gordon, who plays for Valparaiso, and he told me that at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts Center, there was a game that had to get put on pause because... Obviously, that that's that arena is where, you know, hockey is played and basketball, and so there was some ice that was melting, and that's what caused the floor to. Pro be a tip: wet. Next time, it's just I spoke to Aaron Gordon. <laughs> I did speak to Eric Gordon too, his father. <laughs> Emery Lanier has just checked into the game for Davidson. 3.30 to play in this second half. There's Brian Hart. He's got a lot of promise the rest of the way this season. Coach Nichols said he's been the biggest surprise in his energy. And work ethic, Hart has 12 points. One thing's for sure, Radford, they can run out a lot of guys on the floor. Great fake by Unjun Lee. That was crafty, Houdini-like from the South Korea native. 14 points for Unjun Lee, five rebounds, three assists. And one steal. Well, Radford froze Lawyer coming around the screen with the second defender, and he was able to pitch it back to Lee. And when you have a three-point shooter like Lee, it's really hard to close out as that secondary defender, and Lee makes him pay just going right by him to the basket. A timeout taken by Davidson. 19-point lead for... The Davidson Wildcats is Lee getting to the rack a moment ago. Great fake. I think the timeout just was for some substitutions. And Chris Ford has just checked into the game. And so has the young Icelandic talent, Stiermir Thorsterson, a.k.a. Storm, according to his players and Bob McKillop. All reserves out there for Davidson with the exception of Foster Lawyer. Emery Lanier at the free throw line. He's got one point on the season and connects on the first free throw. Drew Dibble enters the game for the Wildcats. And replaces Foster Lawyer, who had a heck of a day. 24 points for Foster Lawyer. The Michigan State transfer is just outside of two minutes remaining in this contest from Belk Arena. Again, both of these teams have uh, quite a long stretch of time without a game unless they're able to reschedule next week. Davidson was supposed to play Loyola Chicago on Wednesday, but the Ramblers had a COVID situation, so Wildcats will try to reschedule somebody. Here's Drew Dibble. The corner three is pure. First points of the season for Drew Dibble. Playing in just his third game this year. 
The icing on the cake for Bob McKillop's team. Yeah, great to see for Dibble and on the other end a moment ago, that was McNeil's first bucket of the ball game and give Davidson credit for keeping him in check, a guy who averages seven points in 21 minutes of ball game, held silent for the first uh, 38 minutes of regulation. David Christensen picks up the foul. Lewis Jonkum at the free throw line. Caught up with Lewis a couple of days ago. He's played at a really good academy prior to arriving at the collegiate level. Hardgrave Military Academy, which is the same place the likes of Montres Harrell, Terry Rozier attended, and told me that he learned how to go outside of his comfort zone there. Had to get up at 5 a.m. every day and march and also had to do the dishes quite a bit after lunchtime in the cafeteria, so a very disciplined and structured routine for Jockham at Hargrave Military Academy. And started at VCU and is now at Radford. And it'll be Radford basketball. Ben Craig into the game, and Michael Katzok. Craig a senior, and Katzok a freshman on the floor for Davidson. So all reserves and guys that don't get playing time, much playing time throughout the year, and mop-up duty to run this one out. But these guys, even though they don't get a lot of playing time during games, Bob McKillop has mentioned this a lot in post-game uh, press conferences and whatnot, that these these guys are vital in practice and they could very well, especially a guy like Stiermir Tharsterson, get some minutes as their careers go on. He's 6'7", good range from Iceland, and Coach McKillop likes what he's seen so far from him and limited time on the floor. Final seconds will drip off the clock. Emery Lanier hands the ball off to the official, and that will do it. A 20-point win 